Picking out a microphone for your content is very much so like picking out a car for your everyday life. If you're a person that moves around a lot of equipment, lumber, whatever, you need a truck. If you're a person that drives long distances and you don't necessarily have a lot of stuff to bring along with you, get something like a, a little sedan, like a Honda Civic or something like that. It's good on gas, but can't handle as much lugging around. Picking out a microphone is just like that. When you have the AT2020 and the ZDM1 here, condenser dynamic, your specific scenario that you're in and your environment that you're in could dictate which one you're going to choose. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel, I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be having a little bit of a comparison between the Audio-Technica AT2020 and the Zoom ZDM1, and figuring out if a condenser is for you, a dynamic is for you, a super cardioid, or just a regular cardioid. There's a lot of factors that goes into it, so let's jump right into the build and talk about how these things are constructed. Now, the first thing as far as the build is concerned the first thing that really stands out when it comes to the ZDM-1 in any comparison I'm going to make is chances are it's going to be lesser than the other because I feel the ZDM-1 and it's it feels cheap and if you know what I'm talking about you know that the cheap feel is very disheartening. Now I preface this by saying it is a cheap microphone. It's under a hundred bucks which is considered a cheap microphone. So even with the shock mount, it's under $100. If you get it on sale, especially, the Audio-Technica AT2020, on the other hand, is $100 just the microphone. You got to get the shock mount. This shock mount is made for the 20 series, so you're going to have to pay a little extra for it. It's like 40 bucks for it, so it comes out to be like 140 bucks. But you could get shock mounts with the little spring-loaded one for like 15 20 bucks on Amazon. Still a extra cost, but you're getting the AT2020, better build and the better construction, the Audio Technica construction that they are known for. So let's tap the shock mounts on the microphones here. And this is the shock mount on the AT2020 I'm tapping. Then I'm gonna tap the body. But on the other hand, you got the Zoom ZDM1, which tapping the shock mount now and now tapping the body itself there's probably a little bit more noise now consider this it's a different type of noise condenser microphones are usually more sensitive to sound and you usually want a shock mount for them with a shock mount for a dynamic microphone they're usually more rugged and they can be handled a little bit more the zdm1 is not one of those microphones it's not a sure sm7b or a rode pod mic that can handle some handling noise but with a condenser microphone for sure you don't want to handle it too much you're not going to be someone on stream moving around your condenser microphone if you have a dynamic microphone you're going to be inclined to move it around because you can don't get fooled by the ZDM-1. It is a dynamic microphone, but it does not have good handling noise. Now back to the builds actually physically on them. Uh, the grills on both are, are, for the most part, microphones, if they're around like the $75 to $100 range, which this combination is, they usually have good grills and they usually don't cheap out on those. But for this example, uh, if I was to talk into the grills themselves obviously I'm feeling them now pretty sturdy so if I'm talking into them now you notice that there's not much protection around the diaphragms so you're going to have plosives and you're going to have issues like that that's why this windscreen also affects the tone is used this here this pop filter here this SE electronics one doesn't really affect the tone too much it just helps you avoid plosives but we'll get into plosives when we go in the booth so as far as the builds are concerned i really like the at2020 better uh the zdm1 is the lesser of all the microphones that i will cover because it's just not 
built well. I mean, I, I don't want to say not built well. It's not built up to par the way that I would expect it to be. But it's to be expected. I said this in the other comparison videos. The ZDM1 and Zoom, aren't they're, they're an audio recording company. They're not necessarily a microphone company. Audio-Technica is a microphone company. They make other things, of course, but they're a microphone company. So now that we're done with the builds, we're going to get into some techie talk and talk about how these things are internally, electronically, all that stuff, all the specs and everything. Here's a graphic of all the things that are in the manuals or the major things, and then I'm going to cover some of the more important things when it comes to comparing these two. So the first thing right off the bat that really stands out with these microphones is the sensitivity. Makes sense. Condenser microphone, dynamic microphone. ZDM1 is negative 54 decibels, while the AT2020 is negative 37 decibels. Makes sense. It's just the way the construction of those types of microphones are. You're going to need phantom power for the AT2020, and you don't need phantom power for the ZDM1. If you do have a FET head or some type of cloud lifter type thing, you will need phantom power, but that's to power the actual DB booster, whatever you choose to use. The next major thing is the fact that we have a super cardioid over here and a cardioid over here. As I said in a bunch of videos, cardioid's a heart shape, a little more inflated. Super cardioid, a little more honed in, but has a little bit of pickup on the back. There's a byproduct to that. So the byproduct for the cardioid is a little more inflated so that you have a little more noise pickup around here. The ZDM1, on the other hand, may be a little less pickup on those edges like this. Now let's dive into the frequency responses as a curve, not necessarily as a sound. Sometimes they reflect, sometimes they don't. So let's get into it. So looking at these frequency responses, let's get into the lows first. And you notice that the AT2020 doesn't have much of a roll off. It has a dip around like 75 hertz. And those low ends are a little lower than the rest of it. It doesn't have that much of a low presence, but it has some. Enough that you can uh, manipulate it if you want a little bit more. Or if you like it naturally, you could just leave it the way it is. Now, depending on the source, depending on how you sound in it, will reflect what you do in the post. The ZDM1, on the other hand, has a, a bit of a shelf, not too crazy, not too aggressive, but it has a bit of a shelf coming down to roll off some of those frequencies. But it still has that low presence, especially when you add the windscreen to dampen some of those high frequencies, which we'll get into the highs in a little bit. Moving on to the mids, it's pretty simple. They're both pretty flat, little bit of bumps on the AT2020, but Nothing too crazy to really say anything bad about it. It's flat. It's nice. It's great for a spoken word. Same thing on the ZDM1. Flat as a pancake. Now, finally, let's get into the highs where they, they pretty much differ a lot. And uh, I may say differ in a lot because the ZDM1 is very boosted. And, and the reason why you need a windscreen, at least in my opinion, to dampen some of that. It's like putting a mute on a uh, instrument or like a if you played an instrument like a brass instrument you get a mute in a trumpet or a trombone i played trombone in high school just so you know and i used mutes i used uh different filters and stuff so on the at 2020 side you got some presence boost very specific and not too crazy but it's a nice smooth tone it's a nice uh just nice sound, especially for this microphone's price. This $100 condenser microphone price range is a very competitive market. And you got Blue End there. You got MXL. You got so many other companies. Uh, I can name them all, but <laughs> I'm not going to do that. There's so many uh, that are around that $100 mark. $150, you get into the AT2035 side, maybe. So if you like that comparison, let me know if you've seen it. If you haven't, I'll leave a card in the corner for that comparison between the 2020 and the 2035. Uh, you guys seem to like it, so uh, it's a good comparison. It's nice to see uh, people uh, engaging in that video. So like I said... If I was going to compare these two, the mids are a wash because I feel like they're pretty even. The lows, I kind of prefer the ZDM1, but I got to consider that the fact that it's a condenser microphone here, but I will lean towards the ZDM1. And we're just talking about the chart. We're not talking about the tone. On the highs, I'm going to lean towards the AT2020 because on the chart, I feel like it's 
more smooth and more, uh, I don't know, just a nice kind of smooth sound. And that's just looking at the chart, not necessarily how it sounds. And some of those tones, and I really do feel in this case, in this comparison, the tones reflect the frequency response curves on the chart. So if you're really paying attention to that, it's pretty much even with the chart and the ZD and with the ZDM one and the AT2020. I feel like they're pretty on par with each other. Uh, little fluctuations here and there. Their their mid sections is the major thing, so you don't get a lot of muddy sound. Okay, so we're done with the builds. We're done with the techie talk. The last two things we're gonna do is a noise test. Just be quiet for a little bit. Boost it up a little bit for you guys and the off-axis rejection, which we're going to do in the middle of the room because it's easy to do. So let's be quiet for a little bit. All right, so you may have noticed some talking upstairs, uh, maybe a hum from a dehumidifier in the other room, hum from my computer with the fan, not really sure. Uh, you probably hear a little bit of it. I boosted up a decent amount, uh, probably the, right around like 10 decibels. So you'll see in the corner, uh, you saw in the corner, I should say. All right, so we're doing an off-axis rejection test. I do it in the middle of the room now because it's just easier to do your off-axis rejection and give you a good idea of what it's going to sound like a couple of feet away. And obviously throughout this video, I've been talking about like two, three inches away from the microphones. With a condenser microphone, you have a little bit more leeway, but you also are going to be subjected to some reflections if you do go a little bit further away. So let's get into that test and see how that affects these microphones. Okay, about two feet away from the microphones. This is what it's going to sound like in a mildly treated room, the Rebel Tech Studio. And uh, obviously, you got a condenser, you got a dynamic, you got a super cardioid, and you got a cardioid. All these things come into play and come into play with your decision. We're going to go to the 90s and then do 180. All right, 90 degree test on the ZDM1 side, stage left as it was. And this is going to be your off axis rejection from 90 degrees and you got the uh, mini fridge going off right now so maybe it's a good example of what that's going to be like but uh this is going to be your off axis rejection there is a sweet spot in the super cardioid polar pattern that i've mentioned before in 120 to 135 degrees right around here and you might notice a little bit more rejection of noise on both the microphones, not necessarily just the ZDM-1, but I'm about a foot away from the ZDM-1 right now and a little bit further from the AT2020. So this is gonna be your off-axis rejection in that respect. We're gonna do the other side now. Now, 90 degrees to the AT2020. The ZDM-1 is a little bit further away. This is gonna be your off-axis rejection masonite on those walls they're a little bit treated a little bit of foam there to reduce the reflections but for the most part it's not crazy treated but it's good enough now moving into the sweet spot of the super cardioid about 120 degrees to 135 degrees this is going to be your off-axis rejection uh both of them probably have a little bit more rejection than the 90s and this is what it's going to sound like uh about like two maybe two and a half feet away so that's going to be your rejection let's do 180. all right so i'm about two feet away from the rears of the microphones maybe a little closer to the zdm1 but remember super cardioid has a pickup a little bit of hint of pickup on the rear there's more rejection on a cardioid from the 180 degree so keep that in mind when you're doing this you might get some reflections off the walls coming back but for the most part this is where the source of the uh, rear noise is coming from my voice obviously okay so let's go to the booth and see how these things fare with each other and see how the voiceover style of a microphone could be if style is in like in a booth in a controlled area and this will give you a good representation of how the microphones are naturally and without any alterations by the environment all right so we're in the booth with the ZDM-1 and the AT-2020. And as I probably said in the studio part of this video, I haven't listened to the AT-2020 in a while. I haven't used it very much. It's not something in my um, rotation of microphones usually. But as far as this combination is concerned, I feel that in the booth setting, it's a matter of tone because 
it's not a matter of anything else other than what you want to hear and what your sound, your what the sound you're looking for is going to be when putting it out to a voiceover performance, a um, personal podcast, or maybe even like a an audio story, as I call it. They're considered podcasts, but I call them audio stories. A lot of good ones out nowadays. Uh, incredible work that people are doing with sound design and stuff like that. I'm researching and I'm planning on doing some stuff like that in the future, but uh, I need to learn a little bit more about sound design to go ahead and put it out there. But it's a little teaser there for you. So switching over to the AT2020, and I remember how much I love this microphone. It's got that nice low presence. It doesn't have a lot of low presence, but it has a lot of nice low presence. And uh, I noticed that, obviously, I don't have a windscreen or a pop filter on right now. I will put it on in just a sec. But good segue. Let's do that first. Yeah, it needs a, it needs a pop filter. Back on the ZDM1. Oh, God. Ugh. Oh, that's rough. That's a rough one. That's why it has the windscreen. You're going to need it. AT2020. Yeah, it's much better with the windscreen on. And uh, there's one more. ZDM1 with the SE Electronics. You get a little bit more air in there, but that's okay. It's not a, a burst of air that's really disturbing the diaphragm. So let's get this set up so that I can get the the AT2020 and the ZDM1 the way that I would use them in the booth. So like this, like this. Of course, if you have a preference as you like you like the ZDM1 without the windscreen on, that's cool. If you want examples for that, go check out the individual video on that. So, let's talk about the tones here. On the ZDM1 right now, you got a broadcast style. You got a broadcast sound, low presence uh, with the windscreen on, you dampen a little bit of those high ends and you're looking for that that broadcast performance. Now, it's on a budget. It's not a Shure SM7B, for example, which eventually is going to be going up against the ZDM1, and it's probably going to devour it. The Shure SM7B is going to devour this, but it's nice to have that contrast of budget and professional, which, I mean, technically, if you get paid for something and you use a ZDM1, you, it's professional. <laughs> it's semantics, I know. Moving over to the AT2020, and it's one of those things, it's like seeing your best friend after not seeing them for a couple months. And nothing has changed. It's still a valuable, like, sounding microphone. Like, I say valuable in the sense that it's $100. It's been $100 for over 10 years. And, uh, God, this microphone sounds amazing for the price. So... I just love this sound, the rejection and noise, the way that it sounds in a booth. You can do a lot with this microphone. A little bit of love on the back end, and it's a smooth sound. It really is. I love the sound. It might be a little bit airy here and there. Like, I'm hearing a little bit of my nasally kind of voice. If you have a nasally kind of voice, it's maybe a little rough, but you could take away some of it in post. I really love the sound of this microphone, and it's... Eh, I know. Some people may say I'm like an audio techni technica like fanboy, but uh, they make quality stuff. They make quality microphones. The upside for the ZDM1 is the fact that it's a super cardioid and you can put it anywhere. The negatives are the rejection of noise and stuff like that. But as far as the tone and overall overall microphone in a booth, AT2020 hands down. I, I I don't even think the ZDM1 holds a candle to it, at least in the booth. Uh, rejection of noise, maybe off-axis rejection, maybe it has that. But I noticed that a lot of people noticed that the AT2020 is really good at rejecting noise, uh, especially in untreated rooms and the studio here. It's really good at it, and it's surprising. Um, for a $100 microphone, very good job, AT uh, Audio-Technica. All right, it's hot in this booth. Let's go to the untreated room and see how these things fare and the rejection of noise. All right, so we're in the untreated room with the AT2020 and the Zoom ZDM1. Uh, no pop screen because that's not the part of this. Uh, it's just going to get in the way. I feel like it's just going to be uh, distracting, to be completely honest. To get a lay of the land right now, my old bedroom, you've probably been here before. If you've been here before, uh, just ignore me. Uh, we'll get into the test in just a sec. For, for anyone who hasn't been here before, area rung underneath me above a uh, 
wood floor, 10 foot ceiling, roughly 10 by 10 room, roughly drywall for the walls, the windows over there, glass, obviously, and a TV behind me. These are all the things that you got to consider and maybe relate to when using uh, these microphones in your scenario, or if you're trying to figure out if these microphones will be in your scenario, if you plan to get one of these. So obviously condenser microphone, dynamic microphone, super cardioid, cardioid. So we're going to get into the off-axis rejection and some noise tests. We're going to also add in an air conditioner and a fan to kind of add more texture to our tests to see how they react to it. Uh, I haven't done much tests with the air conditioner, but the fan, obviously, I know that it that it doesn't do well with microphones sometimes, especially with a condenser microphone like the AT2020. So let's do our off-axis rejection. All right, so we're about a foot away, and this is going to be your distance test of just something a little bit further away from normal use of a microphone. Chances are you're not going to be using anything from this distance unless you're using a shotgun microphone or a pencil condenser microphone. With these, you should be right up on them when you're using them. 90 degrees, stage left on the ZDM1 side. This is what you're going to hear with your off-axis rejection. Remember, super cardioid, cardioid is going to be the difference between the two when it comes to these tests. Uh, the other side of the wall has a hallway, so you might not get reflections, but you might get an echo. Uh, you got some flat walls, but not too crazy. There's more stuff on that wall than the one that I'm on right now. Moving over to the sweet spot right now, this is going to be your off-axis rejection in that 120 to 135 degree area, roughly, on that super cardioid. You're probably going to notice some less noise. There is a flat wall right there. As you can see, there might be some reflection there, but certainly from my voice going to the microphone is going to be less apparent on both of them, but probably more so on the ZDM-1. All right, 90 degrees, uh, stage right on the AT2020 side. This is going to be your off-axis rejection, like I said before. The windows over there in the flat wall probably give you some echo, uh, but probably not that much reflection. It's probably not that bad, but just to let you know, you might hear it. Uh, maybe more so on the condenser on the AT2020 because it's more sensitive than the ZDM-1. So I'm moving over to the sweet spot of the ZDM-1. This is going to be your off-axis rejection for that. Maybe you notice some differences. Maybe you don't. Not really sure. Uh, yeah, this is the off-axis rejection. We're going to do 180 next. Okay, 180 degree test, about two feet away from the rears of the microphones. And uh, obviously, like I said, you might have some reflections off those walls, but you guys let me know down in the comments what you hear, if you hear anything. Uh, you might not even hear me talk. Who knows? All right, as promised, noise test. We're going to be quiet and then do fan with talking, without air conditioner, high and low with and without talking. So I'm going to shut up. <laughs> All right, so now that the fan is on, you got a little bit of a taste of it without me talking. Now I'm going to talk, and this is the mix between me and the fan. Uh, so, yeah, you might not notice it too much on the ZDM-1. You might notice it some, but not as much probably with the condenser microphone of the AT2020. Uh, I could be wrong, but the AT2020 is a surprisingly uh, good microphone at rejecting outside noise, but a fan is pretty rough sometimes so now what we're going to do we're going to turn on the air conditioner and turn off the fan and do high and low and then i'll mix it with my voice all right so i had to move a little bit and uh, give it a fair test try to get it roughly in the same area of the air conditioner being over there it's not going to be perfect, but this is a rough test on it. And of course, you're going to, if you have an air conditioner in your room, you're going to have to deal with this and try to configure yourself in a way to reduce it or just deal with being with deal with it being hot. Uh, my suggestion is just find the like just listen to it, make some recordings and twist it around and try to figure out where the lowest one is. 
if you want to record or use your microphones with an air conditioner. All right, so air conditioner at full bore. This is what you're gonna hear with the mix between me and the air conditioner. It's probably terrible, to be completely honest with you. Uh, that's just the way it is. If you have outside noise, this is what it's gonna be like. Uh, yeah. So let's go do a recap and outro this video. So as you can see, I prefer the AT2020, and that is the comparison between the AT2020 and the ZDM1 by Zoom. Uh, to be honest, I, I really do feel that the AT2020 is maybe one or possibly two of the $100 condenser microphones on the market today, and definitely in the top five of the $100 microphones on the market in general between all types, I mean, condenser and dynamic. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. And it helps this video, helps this channel get out to more people and uh, really helps me out. I really do appreciate the likes and uh, the views. And uh, if you have any comments, leave it down in the comment section, which one you prefer, which one you may have or get. So as far as comparisons are concerned and microphone reviews, I will be doing a bunch of videos on the AT2040. Uh, it's right on my desk there. So. Uh, it's going to be compared to just about everything, so expect a bunch of videos based on that. I'm about to record uh, all of them <laughs> in the next couple of days, so it's going to be a hectic kind of couple days for me, but I'm going to try my best to get a couple of videos out in between, and then obviously if you've been here before, you know that once I get all of them done, they'll start rolling out really smooth. So I might have one video out next week, and then progressively after next week it will start to flow in a little bit more maybe i'll throw in a couple of shorts as well if you have any ideas for shorts maybe tech or uh anything uh let me know down in the comments as well if you want to ask me things more directly or just hang out with me i stream on the weekends right on this channel and uh yeah just hang out play some video games uh i'm still waiting on my uh new camera so we're not gonna do dot to dot art until that camera comes in uh, I really just don't want to deal with the C920 anymore. I could technically do it, but I just don't feel like dealing with it. It's a pain in the butt to set up uh, as far as color is concerned. And that's all I got for you today. Until next time, take care. And I'll see you in the next video. They say the mighty penguin will travel 300 miles with a pebble in hand to meet his mate. It's a stupid fucking line. Uh, what is wrong with my head? <laughs> oh, God. This is what happens when there's no one around. The madness sets in.